her request, I'm doing some moody spring decor ideas. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back. The first project is a pedestal tray. I've got some of this slate colored paint here. It is a dark gray. A candle stand with a wide bottom. It's gonna give it some stability. It's about six inches across, five inches across on the bottom, and then a 12 inch round of whatever type of material you want. I would have preferred wood, but this is what we got. And then these are from Timu. This comes in a large package of prints. I think there's maybe six or nine in there. We're gonna use a few. I'm gonna use some Mod Podge, the brush, and a brayer and scraper. And we're also gonna be using, of course, some things to age it. Now you always wanna start off with your projects, cleaning them well. You wanna be sure your paint sticks. So I'm just using some glass cleaner here for that and let it dry thoroughly. Take it outside, spray paint it while it is drying. I'm gonna pick a chalk paint that is similar to the background and it's sort of a mm, like a cream color. So I'm gonna use this on the back. I know that the size of this picture is a little bit more narrow than the entire width of this round so I'm just making sure that the edges blend you can see here what I mean by that there's a little bit of overhang on the sides when I get it centered so I'm just going to continue that and go on the inside tracing it right to the inside um, all the way around I'm using an embroidery hoop to help trace out my because it fits, you know, to help trace out the figure on the picture. And I'm gonna go all the way around carefully because I don't have this closed completely tight. You can see it kind of skip up a little bit. You can use whatever you would like uh, as a framework or a guide to get your cutting straight. So I just have that in pencil and that way I'll be able to erase the marks on it and I have it face up rather than face down so I can see where I'm tracing. And I'll carefully go around right over the line and cut this out. And so it's gonna fit beautifully on this round. I'll add some Mod Podge. Spread it out. And because this is a canvas, not poster paper, that is actually canvas, I'm going to give it a good, generous coat. You know, you don't want it spilling over the sides, but a generous coat to grab onto that canvas. Then I'll try to get it centered and then press it down with my hands. Then I'll use my brayer. And this is just gonna get out any bubbles or lines that might be in there. But the thickness of that canvas makes it very nice and smooth. And then I'll use my squeegee and pull down and press on it. And if any bubbles out the side, go ahead and wipe that off, but don't let it rub back over the top of your canvas. It may interfere with where you put your wax when we age it. So now you can see I'm just going back over and gently removing that pencil line and wiping it away. And this is what it looks like so far. And you know, you could leave it like this if you like this but I age everything. Now on this first project, I'm gonna give it a really good aging. I mean, it is going to look very old and weathered, like maybe it was sitting on someone's porch. This one's gonna get a lot of aging. But in one of the projects that we're doing in a few minutes, you'll see, I'm gonna give you an option if you don't like as much aging, how you can do it. So I always encourage you to make it your own. And sometimes in crafting, we have to sort of experiment to see what we really like the best. So I encourage you to do that in your crafting as well. Now I'm just using a brush. I used a foam brush to go around the edges because I wanted to kind of have that line disappear, you know, the, the gap there between the canvas and the line. And I love the way that looks. I'm going in with a baby wipe and wiping down until I get the look that I like. And this is how I like it. Then I'll take some distressing spray and I actually have two colors, but on this one, I'm just going to use this brownish tone. It is a Tim Holtz product and I got it on Amazon. 
putting this brown on top of that gray gives it a little more of an aged look it looks a little dusty it's almost dimensional dimensional in a way that it turns sort of a powdery texture i really enjoy it just started using it recently so now once you get that chance to dry we're going to try to find close to the to the midpoint and if you want to measure this off by using some lines you could certainly do that but you know i just like to uh to eyeball it I'm going to sand away any paint and then right down a little bit into the glass to just help bond that MDF or whatever that round is to the glass. Then I'm going to use some sort of a super glue. I'm using E6000 because in my experience it works really well and because I have a lot of it. So I'm going to use it. I've also learned recently from Kendra from Late Night Creations that tight bond is a very quick grabber and uh, so I've ordered some from Amazon and I'm going to be trying that out on my channel too. All right so I'm going to flip that over in the middle somewhat and I found that if I pull it down underneath me where I can get right over the top of it I do pretty good at getting center. Then I'm going to gently go around and drag a bead all the way around the top where it connects to the round and this is how it's going to look. You can see where I did the distressing all over it and then I did a little bit of um, try to add some depth there between the bones and everything and I like it I think it's really pretty this would have been gorgeous with a piece of wood on top you don't want to use anything heavy on this right nothing heavy You can watch my videos on Monday and Thursday at 6 p.m. You can be a subscriber for free or you can join the memberships. Apothecary jar. So here's a piece of that canvas that I've just cut away from another piece and I got a little jar that I thrifted. We're gonna take some more of that slate spray paint. We're gonna do a candlestick, the lid, and the jar itself. So if you want to take your plastic ring off, which I recommend when you're doing these over, just get you a pokey tool. Yes, we'll call it a pokey tool. Just pop that right off. And it'll go back on easily when you get ready to, to reassemble it. Clean that ring as well, that area as well. While that's outside drying, we're going to age this little piece. I've already used my fine little scissors that I have, thanks to Jenny and Diane who gave them to me on a cruise. It was a lovely gift and very welcomed, especially in this project. And I'm gonna go all around the edges with a light amount of this antiquing wax all around this. This is going to give it some shadowing. It's gonna give it some depth so that it doesn't look flat. And it is also going to age it, which is what we want when we're doing moody projects, right? So just mainly around the edges. I don't wanna take all the color out. And this is how it will look when I've got that done. We'll do a little further aging momentarily. All right, so once it is done, this is what that jar is going to look like. And the lid, don't need to do the inside, not necessary. Don't know where the white paint came from. And then here's that candlestick. I've used it in a few projects and now it's gray. And look, y'all, we're gonna put this right across the jar. Here are a couple of little buds and leaves that I also cut out that we can use on another part of this. So I'm, I see where my seams are. I'm going to make sure that I've got a point where it is pretty and there's no seam. And I'm just going to hold it in place with a little squeegee. I'll use some Mod Podge. Now, I believe this is the dishwasher Mod Podge. I don't recommend this one necessarily. Uh, it is very shiny finish. And if you put it on really heavy, it's going to leave brush strokes. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you this as you watch what I'm doing. Once you get this down, and you get your glue all feathered in around all of the parts of this canvas, you want to go back in with a sponge brush and just pat up and down all over this. Okay, pat up and down all over it. That's going to take your lines out and it's going to be much, much better. All right. And I just went nuts here with the glue. You're going to see me put way too much on, but I'm going to be wiping some back off. This was another one of those things that I have never done before, so I'm, I'm learning and I'm showing you as I'm learning because I think that's important. We don't always do stuff perfectly the first time, right? And sometimes it doesn't come out at all. 
But just so you know, if you're one of those crafters who says, oh, I can't do that, I can't craft like you. Yes, you can. It's a lot of trial and error, you know? But that's what makes us better. Yeah? Okay, so you can see how much I have on here. Oh yeah, there's a lot. But I'm going to be quickly putting it on and wiping it back. I just want to be sure that my edges are all sealed and that the entire project looks the same. Like I didn't have to put this on here, did I? I, I probably not. But then the texture of the bottom would not look like the top of the jar. And everything needs to be consistent to get a look that I'm going for. But you can see I've wiped most of that away and all of the white is going to be clear when we're done. Again, you're going to have to go back over this too with a sponge and pat, pat, pat. Or you can wait till everything dries and then maybe sponge on some chalk paint in a similar color, you know, all over except where your print is. Totally up to you how you do that. I just want you to see what we can accomplish. See, I love it. I love it very much. I think this is nice. It turned out how I had it in my head, and I am glad of that because I was worried for a minute, y'all. No joke. All right, so now I'm going to age it a bit more. I'm going into my antiquing wax, and I'm going to tap most of that off, and then I'm going to start going around the entire candle stand. We'll do this on the other pieces as well, but I don't want to get anything heavy over the top of our little print because I don't want it to disappear. I want it to still pop just going back and forth back and forth it's a very little bit but it really changes the color from that cool tone down to a more mm, a, a warmer color I guess you could say slightly warmer and yeah I could have started off with a warmer color but I'm using what I have y'all and that slate is what I had so that's what I'm gonna use all right I'm gonna go around the edges of the jar top I'm gonna get in the the decorative rings that are around there make sure that all of it is nice and then I'm going to put the little rubber piece back on or plastic whatever it is then we're gonna take that candlestick and we're gonna sand the top of that one just like we did for the tray I'm gonna sand it I'm gonna get that paint off any Mod Podge off and I'm going to get right down into that glass you want to wipe that away and get all those little pieces off don't do it with your bare hand you may end up with a splinter or a little piece of glass in there and you don't want to do that. It would help if the bottom of your jar is flat. Mine was not. And I didn't pay attention to it until it was time to put it on here. So just make sure that, you're, that you check that out first. Because if it's a bubbled bottom, and sometimes these jars are, um, it's not going to sit straight. But mine mine works. I get it right in the right position and it, and it works, thankfully. So I flipped it over. I'm going to push it to the center. Thank you for stopping by today. I appreciate y'all being here. If you've come from another channel, thanks for stopping by. If I was recommended or if you've been here for a long time, I appreciate you very much. I also appreciate the members who support this channel, who help make this content free for everybody else. It's helping my channel grow, and I appreciate it. Okay, so now we're going to age some more. We've got some of that brown that we used before. And I'm going to spritz that on just here and there, not too heavy, not too close. Once that is drying, or you could probably do it while it's still damp, I will take some of this other spray, which is like a dark, dark silver, tarnished silver, and I'll add that. Then I'm going to dry it. And this is how our apothecary jar is going to look. What would you put in yours? It hide some candy in there. That's what I'd do. All right, the next project is a framed canvas. So here is our smiling skull, looking very happy and jubilant in the spring colors. I'm going to need a piece of cardboard because I have this frame that has no backing. To give you an idea, this is the size of my frame. And that should give you an idea about the size of that print as well. don't have those numbers with me, but it should give you an idea. You can see that somebody has already aged this. I got it from the thrift store, and I am going to give it a little more love. I'm not going to be using these hangers, so I'm going to take those apart. Oftentimes, you'll have these heavy-duty hangers on the back. If you're going to be putting glass back in there, I do recommend you replace those. If not, and you're using something lightweight like foam board and canvas, just, you know, you don't have to have these hangers. You can put them back on if you'd like them. Okay? Make it your own. Always make it your own. Okay, so when I pop all those off, that's easy enough to do. Save them because you may need them in another project. 
I'm going to try to peel some of the paper off and the pieces that are stuck on I'll just sand them to try to make them a little bit more flat because we're going to be painting this and I want it to be a nice finish. The inside ring here or the inside square is kind of yellow because it's actually supposed to be where you sit the picture down but I like more of a shadowed look so this part I take advantage of and give it a little more depth especially in moody projects it's really nice to have that shadowing in there. I'm going to use some Dollar Tree chalkboard paint and it is black like a matte black. I'm going to go all on the inside there cover all that up so you can't see any of that yellow and then I'm also going to be adding that over the entire back of this project and if you get any kind of going over onto the painted surface on the sides or front just wipe that off. When it's dry this is how it looks it's a nice finish and now we can work on the front. So the frame, as you could see, the little tag I showed you actually said gold. So I knew already that there was gold underneath this gray paint. I'm going to take my little foam sander here and go over and just bring back some of that gold. It's sort of a brassy gold, not the pretty color that I was hoping for, but you know, that's okay. Again, trial and error. But I'm going to be adding some antiquing wax on that uh, in a little bit and it's going to tone it down just a tad. But you still will have that dimension in there that is so beautiful in these projects. And it really makes your projects um, stand out and they're different from everyone else's, right? So I've cleaned off anything that I've sanded and now I'm going to go back over all of this with a little bit of anti antiquing wax. And the beauty of using a baby wipe or a facial wipe for this is that because they're already damp, you can move that wax around more before it stays in place. And I like the idea of doing that because you can put some on, you can take it immediately back off if it's too much or you don't like how much that you've added. You're gonna go over the inside, the outside, and also on the, the outsides of the frame. Not necessary to do the back, by the way. I'm gonna blend it nicely, and now the tone of that is a little warmer, so it's gonna look better with our apothecary jar. I like my pieces to, to look nice together. I want pieces that I can use together in sets. Now this I like much better. You can see it's, it's subtle, but you can definitely see it in person. I like that. Let that dry and let's work on that canvas. Be sure you wash your hands. You don't wanna be putting any wax on top of this one because we're gonna age this a little differently. I've just cut down a piece of cardboard a little bit bigger than my canvas and I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue here and use a squeegee to press this down into the paint and drag the paint so that it kind of smears and there's no line. I don't want a line in here. I want it to be nice and smooth and so doing it this way you pull that line out before that bead of paint or uh, the bead of glue has a chance to dry and it'll be nice and smooth and flat. So I hope you try that because it, it works if you're moving quickly. Yes, all the way around. And we're gonna leave it a little bit bigger because it's gonna be attached to the back of the frame. All right, so for this part of aging, I'm going very, very light. And what I'm mainly focusing on here are the little flowers. I'm going to bring that color down just a tad. We're gonna make it a little more moody. And for Moody, you know, we don't want a bunch of bright. I still can appreciate the color because it is spring. And when y'all recommended some spring Moody decor, I hope this is what you were um, thinking of. I hope this is how, you know, that you like these pieces because not everybody enjoys Moody. And some people think that, you know, skeletons and bones and things should be only for Halloween. But I think you can appreciate the techniques, even if you're here and this is not something you would make. I'm giving you a lot of tips and tricks in here, so I hope you can appreciate that. All right, so I'm going to take that same walnut stain, which is what I'm calling brown, and I'm just going to get that, hold it at a distance, and just kind of spritz that lightly on my canvas. This makes a mess. You're better doing it outside, but it was very cloudy the day I did it, so I couldn't do it outside. So I've added the walnut and the tarnished silver on top, and that's all you have to do to age this one. Be sure that you let this dry, or you used your hair dryer or some type of a tool to dry it. And if you wanted to go around and add a darker line somewhere, 
You could certainly do that, totally up to you. I'm going to flip that print over and then I'll turn it over to see how far up or how far down it needs to be and I'm going to lower it just a tad. And this works for me, but if you want to measure things, you can definitely do that. But this is how I do it and it works for me quickly. Then I'm going to take some very shallow staples, very shallow, and I'm going to staple these pieces together. I'm just going to staple each corner down to hold this in place. You could probably use hot glue to do this, but if you ever want to take that print off and use it for something else, it would probably be better if you just stapled it. Do you like this one? Yeah, I think it's pretty nice. So here's a very simple little hanger that you can use on lightweight pieces like this. I'm just going to tie a couple of knots in the string. I'm just using some jute here. And you could use wire if you want to use wire. Totally up to you. This is just one option. There's so many ways you can do this. If you've enjoyed the video, I hope you consider subscribing to my channel because I would love to have you here. And I'm always trying to bring you something different. And I always talk to you in the comments because we have a lot of fun. Turn your notification bells on, y'all, because I am working toward a goal of 100,000 so I can get my silver play button to share with y'all by Halloween. I would love to have y'all be part of that. So consider subscribing to my channel. And I appreciate you very much. Once the glue is dry, you are ready to go. Your picture can be hung and you can begin the decorating process. Putting them all together looks very nice as well. Thank you so much for stopping by today and for hanging out with me. I appreciate your support and I'll see you again real soon. Bye.